Hey there, today's adventure is we are going to a small little island off the coast of South Carolina, where we live, to look for shark's teeth. Woo! But right now we stopped at a supermarket to pick up something real quick. So, But we'll be on our way soon. It's down near uh, Shem Creek is where we're going. All right, after about a two hour drive, we are just outside of Charleston, Shem Creek, South Carolina, heading out on coastal expeditions, going off to one of the little islands to do some shark teeth hunting. I never find shark teeth, but it's a thing to do since I got nothing else to do today. No, I am. And, uh, this boat is inspected by the Coast Guard once a year. We just had it inspected. It's certified to have every kind of safety equipment on board and anything you might need. Uh, we've got life jackets. They're all under these seats y'all are sitting on, <coughs> except for this seat right here. This one has no seat uh, life jackets in it. But uh, there's about 100 and some, 140 life jackets on the boat. Uh, there's a fire extinguisher up here in the in the bow of the boat. We got another one back here in the stern, and uh, we've got this orange throw ring, which Jackie is standing right next to in case somebody gets out of the boat when they're not supposed to, <laughs> or if somebody falls overboard by accident, or however they might get out of the boat. Um, this is an exit. That is an exit. This is an exit. <laughs> wherever you see is an exit so wherever uh, is easiest and most accessible that will be the way to get off the boat I don't think we've ever had to get off the boat have we Jackie? Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not playing around with that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no accidents today. Right. Uh, anyway um, this is a pontoon boat and all of this metal superstructure the things you're sitting, sitting on are welded to the pontoons and because they're welded, there's a slight gap, like an eighth of an inch, or I don't know. How, it, there's a very small gap between the superstructure and the pontoon. So if we encounter a wave or any kind of surf or whatever, there might be some water coming on the deck. Don't worry about it. It is perfectly normal. And But if you have a paper bag or something you don't want get, to get wet, just pick it up off the floor. and. Uh, we will be on our way right this second. Hold your crap back. Say hi. It should be about a 15 hi. to 20 minute ride out there. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get talking about all the stuff around us. Once we get a dolphin is traveling solo. It's a male, most likely. And when a dolphin is traveling, it's a group of them. There's going to be, uh, that's going to be females and their calves, their related young. Um, so they're going to have a little bit different family structure than the open ocean Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. Um, because, and last year, really exciting, uh, last year in 2023, Charleston's dolphins were designated as their, actually their own species. You're walking up in front of me. Oh, that's right. Um, but yeah, they were designated as their own species, and that's through study of cranial morphology, uh, as well as DNA sequencing. That's how we found out we have our very own dolphins. Um, there's about 300 residents that live here year-round. They don't migrate, they don't go to other parts of the country. Um, they just stay here. Uh, and that's because uh, life is good in South Carolina. We've got lots of food, uh, lots of sunshine, um, and uh, an abundance of prey animals for them. So, very, very special.
like that, the boat's dropped us off onto the crab bank just outside of Charleston Harbor. And we're gonna start looking for shark's teeth. Now behind me, behind me is the Ravenal Bridge. And that uh, takes you right into Charleston. So we came out here with, well, I came out here with Miss June and our daughter Angela. Angela refuses to be in my little videos. So I've been ordered not to film her that she didn't sign any waiver. So, but uh, it's basically shark teeth hunting. She's really good at finding them. I'm not, I can walk right past them. Meanwhile, she'll be like, yeah, you just walk right past one. I don't know why I can't see them, but. And I'm not really looking for any seashells because Lord knows I've found plenty of those over the last uh, almost eight years I've been here. But this is 36 acres of man-made island that Coastal Expeditions Foundation, which runs this little jaunt we're on, they and some other uh, naturalist foundations came up with $3 million and the Army Corps of Engineers built this island so that it could be a bird sanctuary during nesting season. And that starts in about five days from now. Today's March uh, 10th, March 15th. Come March 15th, nobody will be allowed back on this island because all the birds will be nesting here and uh, sitting on their eggs. So one of the rules about the crab bank here is bird sanctuary. Department of Natural Resources, nobody is allowed to cross past these signs. Now, there's no rope, there's just signs that you're not supposed to be in that area. Looking for things. You can look where we are, which is, you know, close to the water right here. But you can't go in there. So, good old Miss June was starting to walk up a little bit too high, and I said, remember, you can't go beyond the sign. And we all laughed and said, yeah, imagine she goes past the sign and the laser hits her and turns her into a pile of smoking ash. <laughs> so far, I found one shark tooth, and I just found a lot, and Miss June has found two. Another reminder behind me, letting people know, this is a seabird sanctuary you are not supposed to go beyond the signs and start walking across. Although I did see footprints where somebody went past the signs and walked across the middle of the middle of the island. That's a no-no. For some strange reason, there are people that just always say, you know what, nah, rules? Eh, I don't think I have, I don't think I need to follow rules. Those people annoy the crap out of me. Now right here, Right here we have a cannonball jelly. Now, loggerheads, which are the sea turtles that come up here and nest. Besides the birds nesting here, sea turtles go up here. We'll, we'll do another, but they eat them. They come onto the beach and eat those things. That's, that's kind of cool. Nature just making sure that there's food for all the different species of animals. Now, this is the first time now I've been to Charleston. The first time I've gone across Charleston Harbor. This is the first time I've ever seen a cruise ship docked in Charleston Harbor. Part of this, this crab bank, like parts if you were to go across the middle, and you're not supposed to, but if you were to go across the middle, there's what they call pluff mud. You can sink into that. Uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, about two years ago, Miss June sank in pluff mud. But I was walking along and looking across, and I could see spots where there's still water sitting up there, and, and they have uh, pluff mud which is very mushy, smells really bad, uh, but it's all part of this estuary that feeds the waterways and stuff like that. It's really not that bad out here today on the Crab Bank. Got about an eight mile an hour breeze. Uh, 
but it's sunny and it's like 63 degrees out so you know a little breezy on the boat so i wore a hoodie um because you do get some breeze when they start heading over here coming off the off the harbor a bunch of kayakers down there behind me so now the kayakers that are way down there they're also from coastal expedition they bring little tours out here you know you can come out with a kayak somebody there's a guy they bring you over here from, from uh, Shum Creek if you come out here if you want to come out here you should really go to uh, coastal expeditions we come out here um, a couple of times a year on and off for the last uh, several years with coastal expeditions we come out here they take us to different islands off of uh, the Charleston Harbor again shot of the Ravenel Bridge that takes you into downtown Charleston now right out there in the water we passed them earlier that is the Charleston College sailboat team and they're practicing apparently uh, they're really good according to the, our boat captain so they've won um, a bunch of uh, I guess championships and whatnot so these are all the kayaks from coastal expeditions they brought a bunch of kids out here I guess it's a field trip for the kids because they got into kayaks and left just before we did we came over on a boat so they bunch of school-age children came over in these kayaks with a couple of adults for a coastal expedition but there's a boat out there he's gonna be here a minute <laughs> a good minute because he's gonna wait for the tide to come in before he can leave and that's like later today we don't get off this island till about 5 30. So far, still just one shark's, uh, shark's tooth. That's it. Now our guide today, as we were, our guide today, as we were coming over here, was saying that, you know, Coastal Expeditions Foundation and a couple of other uh, um, naturalist foundations raised three million dollars to get the Army Corps of Engineers to dredge up parts of Charleston Harbor, which is great for Charleston Harbor because it helps with shipping, uh, as far as getting, uh, you know vessels in and out of the harbor at least to keep the harbor nice and deep but they took all of that sediment and built this uh, island so that the bird sanctuary here has something to thrive because the one that used to be in the har harbor is now at high tide under about six feet of water because this is man-made uh, it doesn't get built back up by nature so there's 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 no way for this to get built up so eventually according to her even this um, will end up disappearing and they'll have to build another one at some point in time but that's probably not for a long long time but the other one had been there for years and then after uh hurricane Irma in 2017 they lost part of the island so you know now at high tide you can't see it anymore so but, so they built a new one and this is i think maybe the third time we've been out here on this particular one so my shark teeth count is up to four my daughter angela's got a little vial so i well, files bigger than that it's like a pill bottle but anyway i gave them to her they're not real big you know it's not like finding a megalodon or whatever great white they're just little little tiny shark teeth Shark's tooth. Not super large, mind you, just tiny old shark's tooth. Get my shadow out of the way here. Yeah, 
that's all I found. So this is number five for me now, which I have to turn over to uh, our wayward daughter, Angela. <laughs> Seagulls are loud. What you do is you basically walk along the shoreline and just look at all the wet water, <laughs> wet sand, because it's usually where they wash it. But if you're looking for something shiny, most of the time it ends up being shell and not a real tooth. But hey, every now and then you find one. Now these things are supposed to, I don't know, be getting ready to mate here because they're, they're starting to pair off. They're an oyster something. Oyster gatherer. Catcher. Oyster catcher I think it is. Those two are paired off. Big old Carnival Cruise Line leaving Charleston Harbor. Somebody's going on a vacation. All right, so we got about 45 minutes before our boat picks us back up from this crab bank. I found one more shark's tooth. It's really tiny. Um, so I think I, told, I think I found a total of about seven. Point is, as I walked around, six acres which according to my uh, pacer thing is roughly a mile a little over a mile um, and I have a stiff neck from constantly looking down good times but sure beats working Hoo -hoo. all right so I found another one while I was kind of walking along here and as you can see it could have been a rock could have been a piece of a shell but if you look at it closely you can see this rough edge going toward the the gum line and then you can see there's a line going down the middle and then the tip is broken off but that is definitely a shark's tooth. You're just basically looking for a shark's tooth. Colors to get in the sand. Well, I got the boat. Going to head back. Down, going to dinner.